Good afternoon. Uh, this is the uh, August 2023 uh, meeting, and um, we are officially in session. So uh, I welcome everyone. I thank uh, BCA for allowing us uh, to access, and we are we have a full uh, board this evening. There we go. We have everyone. So I would like to turn uh, over to Dr. Brophy and welcome everyone. Uh, Dr. Andres, can you hear us? We can't hear you. So. I can. Okay, perfect. We're we're all on. Okay, great. Dr. Good How to see. You. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, let's call the meeting of the Board of uh, Health uh, for August 3rd, 2023 to order. First item on the agenda is the minutes from the June 1st meeting. Um, I had no edits, um, Mr. Mr. I make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes as read. Second, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. So uh, passed. Second, uh, third item on the agenda is the um, tobacco permit updates. Um, so the last meeting we had presented to us uh, um, plan, uh, our proposal for what was called a renewal of a license at uh, 71 uh, conven uh, at uh, 711 convenience store and on 7 716 Belmont Street, as well as a East Ashland uh, Realty Trust located at 446 Ashland Street. Uh, so it was restoring um, licenses. Those licenses, um, had expired, uh, and uh, as far as I know, were the licenses that were were, were, were retired. Uh, proposed by a request was made to restore the licenses. At the time, uh, we went back to the uh, at the meeting. Um, um, the um, we took it under. We took the information from the lawyers. I also that we received some letters from some of the counselors supporting uh, this. The proposal for at least uh, the uh, convenience store was that the license be get, is going to be given to the, I believe the building holder, but uh, we, we don't have a, a proposal in hand um, that actually outlines things. Um, and at the time, I think uh, Mr. Fisk and I, um, you know, are looking at it. Um, I, I considered this an expired license uh, and that this one was a new request. Um, I don't think they're, they're, uh, the folks in hand had any uh, relationship to the, uh, to the license in hand. Um, I think you spoke with the attorney um, who has asked yes. for a more formal proposal, and that has not been received yet. Uh, Mr. Ne attorney Nezzarella, who's representing both clients, has been uh, only recently, because we only got the things back from the lawyer to, um, recently, that wants something in writing, uh, not to judge on anything without having something in hand. Um, so um, they've been notified about that, um, but um, we'll wait to see what uh, what comes out of, uh, of of that. But I think in the in the future, um, you know, one of the questions posed to the, to the lawyer as well um, from the city is that uh, uh, I believe the ordinance that's in place right now would not allow for it. It had expired. Um, and that um, a license has to be owned by the operator or the provider of the service. So I, the question, I think, I don't even think the owners of the building have a right to a license unless they're going to be the person providing the services. Uh, because they're responsible for the um, uh, for the sale of the tobacco and so forth. So I think once we have all of these sort of issues laid out and answered, I think um, uh, and knowing what our previous ordinance are are that um, and we did make a few exceptions during the one during the pandemic uh, with the mail issue, and I I believe there was another one where they were in the transition period where we had a grace period. Uh, for people, and we thought we had given out licenses, and but people people had applied but hadn't fully applied. So it was a very a situation where we had denied someone, but it, in fact there were still licenses available. So uh, we obviously made that correction. So so that's the situation that it stands right now. So I think uh, we we will have to readdress this issue probably at the next board meeting uh, once we get a formal uh, some formal information from the lawyer. Uh, and as well as um, uh, then be able to, to take a formal vote on the situation. So, any questions from anyone? None here. Okay. Right. Well, oh, okay, great. 
I think I'll, I'll hold on the second, uh, our next item on the agenda, which is moving uh, forward with the life science bio-ready community adoption uh, guidelines, because I believe Mr. May and Mr. Fay are supposed to be joining us for the meeting. Uh, so we might give them a few minutes to, to join um, and we can go back to them once they, uh, once they join the meeting. Um, for, uh, uh, um, since you've missed a, uh, several of the, uh, a few of the last few meetings, we haven't, we, you know, we've met with several people that are involved in this biosafety uh, you know, and what the requirements would be for the city. Um, you went to a, a meeting that was held, uh, Dr. Montessori went to a meeting that was held on this. It gave us a lot of good information. We've met with Mr. May and, and Mr. Fay in the, in the past. I think, you know, um, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel moving forward. I think using some of the guidance and governance that and, and uh, guidelines that other cities have used, it's, it's a matter of, uh, and we were advised by people in this field to get a consultant to work with the city and the departments that need to be drawn in, the type of expertise that we'll need for review, et cetera, that uh, will be necessary for the city as, as proposals come forward and also um, for monitoring as these, uh, these um, uh, companies uh, open, up, uh, open up their uh, businesses within the city. So trying to do this in a way that uh, provides for the, the highest safety, uh, yet at the same time allow the city to be engaged in and uh, a growing field of, uh, of uh, uh, in the business uh, community. So, so I, I don't know if you have any questions or um, any background on this. I, I, I've been following the emails that have been going back and forth. I appreciate that update, um, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll just wait until it continues to progress. Yeah, and I think we're getting close. I think we're, 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 we have an understanding and it's also some community engagement, making the community aware of these type of businesses that will be opened, et cetera. So I think it's not just the health related issues that the city has to be involved with. You know, it is the, it is the business and the community uh, relations that also have to be taken into account and uh, the various oversight and input from stakeholders as, as we move forward doing this. So I think uh, having a consultant to, drive that um, that uh, process forward is it was probably a great uh, was a good recommendation that came to us. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Great. Okay. Uh, so next item. Um, so this is an item uh, we need to discuss. Uh, the sanitary uh, health inspections uh, services. So um, um, there's been a change in the department and the roles of some folks here. I think um, <laughs> the health sanitary Inspectors are now part of the what is called the City Inspectional Services Department um, within the Building Department. Um, and um, uh, recently, the Barton Council voted on the plan to develop a health uh, a health department, not a board of health, within the city. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of input nor um, feedback on this organizational structure. But the health and some of the health inspectors have been moved now under building inspection. Um, so um, doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. <laughs> Should I be, be blunt? blunt. Or did I, <laughs> I, I was blunt. <laughs> what doesn't make any sense is that we haven't even been, you know, approached or anything. Yeah. You yeah. know, our ideas yeah. on it or anything. We're the board of health, and it just seems like, yeah. you know, yeah. it, we've all been in the dark. Yeah. Well, I'm just concerned about the service. You know, the inspectors that are there are don't have supervision by people that understand the issues that are being raised, and also the rules and regs that need to be followed if an incident should occur. Right. Uh, making sure that appropriate monitoring is taking place. Uh, how you do, you know, the uh, the work up. If you know, uh, got you know, if this is you know, uh, this is not just tobacco permits. This is like the food. Uh, services, restaurants, milk, uh, all of those type of licenses that, that that the board is involved with for reasons that they put the public at risk if they are not appropriately managed. Um, so, uh, you know, um, I, I agree. Doesn't make uh, a lot of sense right now uh, to make the change before an official change in the supervision of, uh, of staff and the department's um, the outline of what this health department is going to look like is clear. So. Has there been, I mean, have you um, made any official inquiries asking if we could be? We, uh, we've, offered, we've offered to 
advise as we had. I mean, even uh, you know, a while ago, even, even before the met with the department, because this passed before, if you remember, even before the pandemic, offered help. And you, you of course, uh, Dr. Andrews, you're an expert in this. Like, uh, you know, you know about public health. Um, uh, you, know, you know, some of the guidelines, the best practices of what public health departments should do and how they should be um, set up. I, I mean, it's a, a embracing and putting together a, a health department that encompasses like the home, housing and so forth is a is a good idea. But you still have to deal with the public health related um, material, you know, piece of it uh, that requires reporting to the Mass Department of Public Health, etc., and the gui guidelines. And, creating the ordinances and making sure that the inspectors are trained and doing the job the right way and um, and we have the capability of responding to to um, situations so and as BU, has a, it, BU has a whole center that is about coordinating public health in local municipalities I mean we have at our fingertips the opportunity for broad spectrums of experts across um, our municipal um, public health yeah. agencies to, yeah. to to put to to support a, a, a top notch department right. if they wanted to create that compared to what we have and that move of um, the inspectors to the buildings make is as is as opposite uh, of what we should be doing as anything and right yeah. A, so do you do you think we should take some action, maybe with a a, a letter to the mayor or or some that uh, again an offer to say that you know we are here, we want to help participate and 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 guide in this uh, in this moving forward. Is or, there a possibility uh, of making a, having a meeting with the mayor, or is it is is it specific council people that we need to address in addition to the mayor? Because I thought we had sent a letter earlier about uh, or something. Yeah, we of... had. Yeah, I believe we had. Yes. And we got no response. We, no, we did. I don't believe so. So. And you know, was there a was there a, a meeting that they expected us to be at that we didn't get an invitation for? There I did a, get an. There was, I was there. there. One. Yeah, there I was. One. There. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't receive. I didn't get an invitation. I, I was not notified of the email, or I the only I notified until like the day of the meeting, and I couldn't. I'm. I mean, I was in clinic. I can't change my. I, I was there. We just, just happened to be at that meeting, right? Um, I was at that meeting. You just yes. happened to be there. No, I, I. I was called. I went with with the uh, doctor uh, Montessor ah. to the meeting, and basically it was nothing about what we're talking about. It was ah. nothing about. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> it was about you know. Uh, when do the guys go out in the morning? It was it was something totally different. I mean, uh -huh. it was ridiculous. But that's why I thought that's what we were going there for. Yeah, yeah. And it was totally something different. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, is there a way that you can set up a meeting with the mayor, or do we just uh, do we um um as a chair? Do you send a, a request? I, can, uh, I certainly, through Dr. Montessor, will put together a request for a meeting just to discuss this. So I think yeah. I think we have to have some insight on it, and uh, particularly when decisions like this are being made, uh, um, and um, you know we have concerns. So yes. I would say, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Not to be blunt, right? So well, that's I mean anyway. that should be on the record. We have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so. So all right, so we'll uh, I'll put a um, we'll have, you know draft a letter. I'll get we'll get it out to the mayor. I'll send it out on behalf of the board to just ask for a meeting. Um, I, I certainly uh, um, you know well I know his, his schedule is difficult and so is yours. Uh, so um, particular days that you're. Well, no, I, I I can make some flexibility between now and before the the semester starts in September. So, okay, have, great, okay. So so between you know if we could find a way to do something in August, that would be great. All right, great. So we'll we'll target a, try to target a date in August that uh, that we can all meet with the meet with the mayor and at least express our concerns, uh, and um, get try to get some insight and guidance into uh, what the plans are, uh, and uh, hopefully help sort of. We shuffle the deck a little bit here. So. Well, hopefully, offer some expertise. Yes, yes. 
Right yeah. now, I mean, again, I don't, I know this is on the record, but it, it seems like the blind is leading the blind. Yeah. No, it is concerning. Uh, yeah. This is, not, this is um, yeah. So. Any other comments on, on this? No, it's a good way to start. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. You still don't see Mr. May. Yeah, I don't see me. I don't see him. Okay. So uh, why don't you update us on uh, what's going on in the in COVID within the city? Okay, for COVID, um, it's still going down. It is not zero, but we have two indicators. Uh, well, we should say three, but two official ones. Um, the um, uh, state uh, surveillance system is still uh, on. So it tracks those um, uh, tests, official tests, um, PCR and uh, molecular um, uh, testing. So the numbers varies um, a great deal. Sometimes, some weeks we can have double digit, uh, 10, 15, uh, 16. Uh, we had an outbreak, um, a cluster, um, um, late May to June. Um, but it goes up and down. Now, uh, that's one way we get, uh, we still collect information. Um, one good thing is that I should say that um, the last death we recorded uh, in the city went, goes back to May 26. Uh, and so we are at 536 deaths uh, throughout the pandemic from uh, inception to date. Uh, active cases as of this morning, we've had 27 um, and then uh, one new case this morning. The cumulative is roughly 34,563. Reason I say roughly, uh, there are about 4,000 cases that, that have been considered as probable um, cases. And so therefore, we could be up to 38,000 cumulatively, but uh, the official number as of now is at 4,563. Mm -hmm. That's one um, uh, track, track number two is with the water, uh, wastewater. Um, we still have the agency uh, Biobat Analytics that collects the um, data every other um, day or so. So um, the data that we have today was collected uh, as of um, um, July 30th, which was Monday, and the report was um, drafted this morning, uh, yesterday rather, and uh, it shows uh, 200, 6,021 uh, copies of the uh, 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 virus per liter of uh, sewer. So it's 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 a lot better than over a million copies. Yeah. Uh, whole lot better, but it's, it's almost not... half from last month. So I think it was a, like a half a million last month. So it's dropped uh, another sort of fifty uh, percent uh, during the time. Which is good. Yes. Now the other, the third component or the third um, um, uh, dashboard, we don't really have much control over it, and that is um, um, home test kits. People never reported them, and uh, so uh, sometimes we do get update uh, or some um, emails from uh, people. I have a, uh, I am positive. I test positive. So uh, until they they bring them to Maven, uh, we can do our due diligence. But uh, there isn't a whole lot we can do if it's not official. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is underestimated since the home testing began, but um, but. Um... You at least have the, um, we're aware of the uh, positive tests that have been reported, and I, I'm sure it's far more prevalent than, than than we know. So, but the wastewater is probably our best judge of, of what's going on. <clears throat> um, the fact that it was a, a you know well over a million, a million, it, uh, the last couple of months, five hundred, uh, five hundred thousand, and now if it's two hundred thousand range, it's definitely we're definitely saying. So there is, and Craig, you may, uh, I, you have done more information on this than us, but they, they, they suspect there might be a little bit of an uptick in the fall. Uh, there is a new variant, and my understanding, just for folks that are watching or aware, is that the, there's a hope that a new vaccine will be coming out, sort of in the fall, against yeah. that will be designed against the newer variants, which are the predominant variants uh, 
uh, going around. So hopefully that will align with the flu vaccines coming out and people can be boosted and uh, get their flu vaccine at the same time. But it's around, my, what I'm hearing is around September, but yeah, you may have better. That's, that's my, that's, that's what I'm hearing as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I may add to that, um, CDC and uh, DPH have uh, announced that at one point they will discontinue free vaccine for everyone. Uh, we don't have the date yet. They haven't announced it. But um, uh, once that is announced, then um, we will not be receiving um, as many um, doses as, as uh, we have because they will not be making them accessible to everybody. However, they will continue to provide free vaccines to individuals um, up to 18 years of age, up to and also to individuals who might be economically challenged. There are some of the individuals, they, the proposal is that um, uh, these individuals can uh, go to the PCP uh, and get vaccine, and get the vaccine. So um, that's the, um, uh, the latest on the CDC and uh, DPH side. So are you planning in the fall, the usual sort of flu vaccines with COVID at the, at the uh, like usually they've gone to the high rises and to the uh, um, elderly services? Um, uh, community um, uh, reach. Uh, is there still plans for that to take place? In the yes, we are working on that. In fact, we are still open at the Shaw's uh, for two hours on Tuesdays, two to four. And then uh, there is an ongoing um, market at the uh, uh, City Hall, uh, the Farmer's Market. Uh, every Friday, so we there uh, from uh, opening to closing. It's uh, it goes ten to two every Friday, and uh, we also um, offer services to all community um, uh, uh, partners that uh, have an event where they want uh, vaccination. Also, right. okay. yes. Yeah. Will you be able when the flu vaccines come in to to and COVID, uh, uh, boosters come in to be able to? continue in those areas, do you think, or are, are you staffed enough to maintain those? Or? Yes, we, we will be able to to uh, coordinate and, and do that because um, with COVID low, um, we breathe a little bit better. And uh, with the nurses, though they're busy because um, I will add that we have other, um, other challenges. Uh, uh, challenges that uh, we face, but uh, yeah, we can, we can um, um, work around the schedule to make sure that we we keep those sites um, active and uh, offer um, both flu vaccines and any uh, COVID vaccines that uh, people may need. Great, wonderful. Good to hear. So, yeah. So, any questions from anyone? No. None here. No. Okay. So, I guess the other issue then that we're having in the city, and you can bring us up to date on, is that we've seen this uptick in um, TB cases that are occurring, which is the other challenge that the nurses are now facing uh, in the city. So, maybe you can. Um, say. Yes, and this looks looks like um, that's uh, the first time we have um, uh, these many TB cases. We have recorded this many TB cases in the city, and uh, my uh, also presence at the uh, state. Masset, which is the Medical uh, Advisory Committee to Eliminate TB. Uh, we discussed this, so that opens my eyes uh, to the larger um, uh, issue uh, across um, municipalities in the state. So um, we have um, around eight cases. Uh, I think I said around because we have one pending, uh, and I don't know if it will be um, allocated to us because um, I think that case seems to be um, uh, should follow should be followed by another municipality. So it's pending right now. But we have um, eight cases, and there are three reasons that uh, we could highlight for that. Um, COVID pandemic is over. The pandemic, the pandemic phase is over. But um, so people travel more. Uh, so there is more interactions uh, with other people. So that's why I think we see the inverse relationship. COVID down one, uh, TB is up. And the uh, second reason is we have a significant number of migrants um, among the um, new cases of TB, active TB cases. Number three, uh, because of COVID, again, it seems that um, people um, 
don't really take as much precaution that they had um, through COVID. So which means that they are um, uh, a little bit more exposed to other infections right now. So that is why um, we are seeing um, those number of cases. And um, we, the nurses follow them very closely so that we can work with them and uh, make sure that um, the cases, um, they follow um, treatment till the end. So officially the treatment can last up to six months as you all know, um, but depending on the response of the treatment, I mean, people to the treat treatment, some of them may go up for another three months uh, before they, co um, they complete training. What we don't want is to have people uh, who develop, um, who are not non-compliant and develop um, uh, TB resistance. Um, so we follow them very closely and uh, also um, there are a couple of cases that seem to require additional assistance such as um, assist, some social, uh, I mean, assistance for um, housing per se, uh, I'll put it out there, but um, we, we do not have all the resources to fund uh, housing for everyone, but at least for the uh, for the uh, duration of the uh, of the treatment, uh, if they face challenges because sometimes they may have obstacles that prevent them from following uh, from staying where they at, and so I receive the um, um, authorization from the state uh, to see what the needs are and how we could uh, subsidize partially subsidize uh, for them to have a place to stay where they can follow treatment, at least through the um, uh, duration of the treatment. So that's a good thing. Um, so I applaud the, the state because uh, they, they make the resources available to us okay. to be able to do that. Do the migrants report to anybody when they come into the state or into Brockton? Uh, yes and no. Um, there are two tracks. One track is individuals who come through a program, I mean, who fly into the country. Others are come through the border of, um, uh, from through Texas. So those who, well, there might even be a third one, but, uh, and so this is, this is perhaps the um, most um, difficult one to track. Those who enter by plane, for instance, there is a program that President Biden um, open late last year. It's a program that allow individuals from few countries to migrate at a certain number per month. So these, they can track down because when they come, um, they are seen by uh, immigration agent. And so therefore they try to get connected into the system and uh, medical um, follow-up or medical exam is one. So those seem to be more formal um, tracking. Those that come through the border, sometimes we, uh, there may be a record for them. Sometimes they may not be a record necessarily. And so uh, they do join the mix where sometimes they could be part of the, the individuals we talk about, but those who enter illegally uh, by some other means, we don't have uh, any way to follow up to, to know what it is. So the cases of, uh, so based on that question that you asked, I would add that the cases that we have are uh, actual cases that are uh, reported either by providers and since then have been uh, documented by DPH on the surveillance, their surveillance system. That answers my question. Have we done all the contact tracing that that might be necessary? Yes, we do the contact tracing. In fact, uh, some of them have a follow up almost every day uh, because they some of them are on um, regular med. Some of them, um, most of them that we have right now, they are in the first or second week. Uh, so they're still at infectious stage. So the nurses um, provide the OT for them almost every day or every other day, including uh, our um, two community caseworkers. Uh, those are the two individuals who transitioned from COVID or case investigation uh, that underwent um, uh, community health um, 
workers training under um, uh, the Boston Public Health Commission that offers that training. And so right now they officially uh, transition as um, community health workers. So they also do the tracking because they are culturally competent um, with the language acquisition as well. And for many of the cases, has there been, there's been no cluster of cases surrounding family members or others that have been, uh, that are, are we, you know, this is always the concern, is that, yes. you know, it, it, once you find one case, it could be a larger, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, in fact, in fact, there is. Uh, we we are following very closely uh, for one case because uh, there is one person who has a close. Um, I mean, a um, uh, a partner, and apparently the partner is is um, question. There is a question mark. So uh, I think we are waiting uh, for the uh, X-ray um, uh, reading right yeah, now. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. that one case, it seemed that there are a few people who have been exposed yeah, cause, okay. within Cause the family. It, yeah, because it can network out fairly rapidly. Okay. I mean, if you have contagious cases, it can move fairly quickly. So tightening down as much as we can on that is, is important. It's always surprising when you hear TB, you know, rises and falls and rises and falls. During COVID, we just, that was out of our screen. We just- Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Oh, which is unfortunate, but uh, and you're still doing the daily observed therapy during from from for all of these yes for all, all of the them. cases yes yeah. yeah so yeah so that's quite a workload for for the nursing to have eight active and one follow up and doing the <laughs> community the, the uh, surveillance of contacts um, is, uh, yeah brings back memories in in the 80s I was boss one of Boston's four public health TB nurses. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> any, any further questions on that? So Nothing here. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so where are we on the agenda here? I think, I think we are at um, page three. Page three is the, uh, so the mental health prom promotions and uh, issues of mental health. So. Yes, we we'll continue to work together with uh, different groups. And in fact, just today, I met with the director of the Southeastern Region of Mental Health uh, because um, the mental challenges continue to, and in fact, they, exa they exacerbate. Um, and added to that is the, uh, arri the new arrivals. Um, we have a large facility in in one of not too far from us here in in Brockton, where the um, immigrants seem to be referred to uh, resources within Brockton, and so therefore, uh, physically or me medically speaking, we are looking to see how to assist them, how we can open up um, uh, resources to them within the boundaries of, of Brockton if they come here. Um, and so given we only have one hospital uh, that is open, uh, so we are working closely with um, with the personnel at the hospital and then Brockton Neighborhood Health Center to address the um, uh, medical issues. As for the mental health, um, I have been um, attending a task force in Boston also, but it's not, it, it groups together uh, providers from different municipalities. And so therefore my meeting today with the director of the um, Southeastern Region Health Department, uh, Mental Health Department was to see how we could work together to um, address the need and uh, the mental health need um, that is either within the city or uh, individuals who may be on the out curse of Brockton, but seeking services within Brockton. So um, it's it's an ongoing um, effort. Um, so that's where we are right now. Um, and um, the Mental Health Advisory Council um, that I'm a, a member of, we don't have, we did not meet in July and we will not meet in this month, but um, uh, next month we will have a meeting and I look forward to um, bringing this to the table for discussion. Uh, because I think we will need additional resources um, in the city to address um, 
a holistic approach of health. Yeah. Falls back on the issue of organizing the how the department of health <laughs> um, operates. And I think you, you put on the uh, uh, agenda as well that uh, just for folks to be aware that there is a na new national um, health emergency hotline service, which is 988. Um, and so uh, for anyone uh, in, in, in an urgent situation, uh, that number is now available. It's available nationally, as far as I know, and uh, 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 for anyone in need that is an immediate. Um, source of, of, of assistance. Great resource. Yeah. So, any questions on, on this? None here. Okay, so, uh, so so coming out of that the discussion of, uh, we are still at a, a, in a city with one hospital that is uh, remains closed. Um, and um, so at last we heard, and I don't know if there's any updates, but uh, it was we were still on a timeline for December uh, as being the earliest that we expect uh, the Brockton Hospital to be back to full capacity. Um, I know they have some pieces open, but not uh, really an inpatient hospital service yet. Maybe you can give us any any new updates on that uh, for the city. Yes, we do have a meeting with. Um... The administration every other Friday at 11 a.m. So the last in the last at the last meeting they uh, seem to be making some progress though. So some uh, services may be open up much earlier than December, but uh, the full operation seem to be on the schedule for early January. Early January. Yeah. For full opening. Yes. Yeah. services now that they they have an urgent care open is it yeah they have urgent care they have two sites one is at liberty street um on the other side of um uh 24 right. um okay. there's uh liberty street and then there is one site um at the um at the hospital, hospital bed site. Side. Yeah. yes yeah. yeah i guess the concern uh, just about uh, you know in january with the reopening some of this is going to be an issue of staffing too. I think there there is such a, a shortage right now in, in uh, healthcare staff uh, and need, um, you know, concerns that uh, even though the building may become operational, it may take some time to get staffed fully back up um, to actually operate at the, at the hospital. But I'm sure that's in there, uh, hopefully in their plans um, to be able to to get the, the staffing that they need back. Um, an operation. Any questions from anyone? Nothing here. No. Great. Okay, I think uh, those are all the miscellaneous, the hospital, um, community health, anything needs. We are, I think we, we discussed the advisory committee. So, so before I leave, I was just thinking probably you know, our letter, I don't know if we, do we need to uh, cast a, uh, or uh, make an, uh, motion to send the letter to the mayor uh, requesting the meeting. I think we probably should, if it's an action item coming. Make a motion that we send a letter. So we, you know, gives us an idea of what's going on. I think we should, no. Second that. Your volume is, um, your, you know, you're, you're on mute. Am I? No, mute. Uh, uh, Chris, I can hear. Uh, I apologize. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys hear the like all in favor? I sort of. We uh, didn't. I didn't hear you. But yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I. Out. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Yeah. So we will send a letter asking for a meeting to uh, for information on what's happening and uh, to offer advice uh, and uh, guidance as to how to move forward. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Uh, our next meeting would be scheduled for the September 7th, uh, 2023, uh, at the same time, 4.30. I think the items on the agenda, uh, by this time, hopefully the issue with the tobacco will have everything. The lawyers will have looked at everything. Uh, proposal will be in place, and we will uh, be able to take action at that, at that meeting. And uh, we'll try to schedule this meeting for with the, uh, uh, with the mayor 
uh, during this month um, uh, of August. Okay. Sounds good. Good okay. to see you all. Very good. Good to see you. Good all to right. see you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice to see you all. Oh, motion yep. to adjourn. So moved. Hey, all right. Bye-bye, <laughs> uh, everyone. Take care. Bye.